The other side of the market is your supply side, which is representing your sellers of the good. Quantity supplied like quantity demanded is the specific amount that sellers are willing to sell. Quantity supplied again is not necessarily equal to quantity exchanged. So just to put this into context, I might be willing to sell 10 textbooks, but I only end up selling two. So my quantity supplied is 10 and quantity exchanged is only two textbooks. Now, what determines our quantity supplied? I would always want to sell more if price of what I'm selling goes up. If my input, this is the goods that go into the production process. So these are your raw materials. If price of my input rises, I would be wanting to sell less. If technology improves and enhances my capability to produce more with the same inputs, I'm able to sell more. Government taxes or subsidies will again affect my overall willingness to sell more or less. Prices of other products, so these are again related products, and number of sellers in the market. So we can go all of these factors one by one, but we want to focus again on the relationship between price of the product and quantity supplied. And in this case, we saw a positive relationship. Why do we see this positive relationship? Because producers always care about profits. Anything that causes profitability to go up, they are willing to supply more. So in this case, as price will rise, holding everything else constant, so your Cetrus Peribus condition again comes in over here, quantity supplied will be higher. So again, our good in question is cotton and I have prices starting from $2 and falling all the way down to 50 cents. And you can see as price is falling, quantity supplied is decreasing. And we can take these coordinate points and plot them on our graph. Again, I have quantity on the x-axis, price on the y-axis, and plotting these points and connecting them together, we have our supply curve. So supply curve is upward sloping, giving us that positive relationship that we discussed earlier between price of the good and its quantity supplied. Increase in supply, much like increase in demand, would refer to increase in quantity supply at any given price and again one of those factors can cause this supply to increase or decrease so let's assume technology changes if I am adopting as a farmer a technology which improves my cotton production at any given price my quantity supplied is now going to be higher so my supply schedule is no longer the same the old supply schedule becomes redundant and at any given price you can see quantity supplied is higher than before so against all of these prices, I have now a new set of coordinate points because quantity supplied is correspondingly higher than before. Plotting these points, we see supply curve shifting to the right and that gives me my new supply curve. Please make sure you understand the difference between movement along the supply curve versus a shift of the supply curve. When price of cotton will change, it's a movement along the supply curve. All those other factors are still held constant and this supply curve is already capturing this positive relationship. So as price increases, we move from point A to point B. However, if something other than price of cotton, in our case technology was being improved, this is causing quantity supply to increase increase at any given price. A quick reminder, increase in supply is always to the right. This is when at any given price quantity supplied is higher and decrease in supply is always to the left when at any given price quantity supplied is lower than before. Let's look at some factors that cause the supply curve to shift. We have already seen technology causing the supply curve to increase. The first one I have over here is input prices. Inputs are those goods which are used in a production process to produce another good. So if I am producing cotton as my final good, input could be land, my workers, uh, the machinery or capital that I'm using. Let's assume input prices are going up. If input prices are going up, cost to the producer or farmer is going up. And with higher costs, my profitability is going down and therefore I'm willing to produce less of this good. So supply of good X will decrease. And on my diagram, remember it's price of the good, price of cotton and quantity of cotton over here. And my supply curve was upward sloping. As I'm producing less now, it shifts to the left and I have my decrease in supply shown as S2, my new supply curve. 
For sellers of the good, there can be two types of related goods. They could be substitutes in production or complements in production. Substitutes in production are those goods which can be easily substituted for each other. So the underlying technology, underlying costs are quite similar. Uh, so you can think of goods like wheat and barley. So the underlying resources required and technology are almost identical. What happens if price of barley increases? If price of barley is increasing, you'd rather produce more barley on your piece of land and therefore as you produce more barley with the same resources production of wheat will go down so in this case supply curve for wheat will decrease so i have quantity of wheat price of wheat and price of a related good in this case a substitute in production increase and cause supply of wheat to decrease complements of production are those goods which are produced out of the same production process so one production process could give you multiple goods or at least two goods or in some cases one good is a byproduct of the other good so as an example you can think of skimmed milk and butter the more skimmed milk i will produce i will automatically end up producing more butter or more cream so let's assume price of skimmed milk is increasing as producers of this good we'd rather produce now more skimmed milk but as we produce more skimmed milk we're skimming the milk we're taking the butter or the cream out and we'll automatically end up producing more butter so supply of butter will increase so here we see a positive relationship between price of the related good and supply of this good so on my diagram, I have supply curve for butter. And when price of the related good increases, it's causing me to produce more butter. The so supply of butter is increasing to the right. Do not use the terminology of up and down for supply shifters. It ends up confusing a lot of students. Always remember quantity increases to the right and decreases to the left. Other than these two main shifters, we have again weather. A lot of agricultural produce depends upon weather conditions. You have favorable weather conditions. At any given price, your quantity supplied increases and supply will increase. If you have unfavorable weather conditions like a severe drought or flooding, you will see decrease in supply or decrease in quantity supplied at any given price. We use the example of technology to show the changes in our supply schedule and then the changes in our supply curve. So I will not go over this one. And lastly, we have changes in expectations. Expectations about the future can affect the supply today. So let's assume sellers are expecting prices of the good that they're selling to go up. If as a seller you're expecting price to go up, would you rather sell more today or sell more in the future? I as a seller would rather sell more in the future and avail these higher prices of tomorrow and therefore earn bigger revenues and higher profits. So what happens to supply today? If I'm holding up my resources and not producing today and rather produce tomorrow, supply today is actually going to decrease. And on our diagram, we can see that at any given price, quantity supplied is lower than before. Therefore, we have a decrease in supply today. Remember, demand and supply curves are always drawn for a particular point in time and for a particular location. For the last one, we have over here number of producers. If more producers enter the market, which is typically referred to as entry so a higher number of producers overall quantity supplied will again increase at any given price and supply curve will now increase to the right if we have exit which is the opposite of entry that is when number of producers leave the industry supply curve will shift to the left let's now see how we move from an individual supply curve to the market supply curve we have over here two sellers in the market silva and lu and we have their respective upward sloping supply curves and we can now again do what we did for our demand curve that we do the horizontal summation of the individual supply curves to get the market supply curve so you can hold price constant at a particular level in this case i can assume price to be constant at one and look at the total market quantity supplied by summing up the individual quantity supplied so silva wants to produce and sell 2000 bushels of cotton and my second seller wants to produce and sell a thousand bushels of cotton so overall i have 3000 pounds of cotton being supplied in the market at a price of a dollar 
so that gives me my first coordinate point for the market supply curve if i move to my second price which is the higher price two dollars you can respectively see the quantity supplied has increased to three and two for the two sellers and we can sum them up and we have our new coordinate point which is corresponding at five thousand pounds of cotton at a price of two dollars connecting the coordinate points i have my upward sloping supply curve for the entire market we can apply it across 10 or thousands or millions of sellers in the market the idea is the same whatever we have seen in terms of shifts that applies to both your individual and your market supply curve